what's cooking this summer? It's been a good year so far, but depending on what part of the market you're at. There's good, there's bad, and then there's rotating, and it's it's been an interesting story. Let's start with seasonality. Then of an election year specifically, this goes back to 1928. Every year that there is an election, uh, here's the average average movement of the S&P 500. So typically, this July August area is a very very good time. Now, so far so good on on the markets anyway. And the dip didn't happen in May. It actually happened in April, where we had the pullback and the and the correction. So this came early this year. Uh, and maybe we're already seeing the run uh, in the summer come early. But as is not uncommon, we'll see September, October are typically ugly and iffy. Um, as always, we're usually pretty quick to to put defensive positions on in this time. But for now, it's really smooth sailing. Even though today is a little sketchy in the market, we've had so many good days. I mean, it was it was overdue to have a have a little bit of a pullback. So no reason to be concerned about that just yet. All right, current major market index indices. This is from last night, so I don't I haven't looked at that this morning. But it's just green everywhere. RRGs are green. The only things that are that are iffy are mid cap and China, and they have been for a while. But directional momentum is is green across the board. So there's not a whole lot to be concerned about just yet. Uh, rate of changes are all all good as well. And slope just confirmed the trend of the direction. So uh, these are all good. Nasdaq, S and P confirmed trend. Total world stock confirmed trend. So we're we're in a good place uh, until this unless this pullback becomes something bigger, which at the moment it doesn't look like it will be. It's, it's just a long overdue retracement after having so many positive days in a row. I, think, I don't think we've had a negative day in July yet. So we were due. We were due. So no no concerns there. Our long term trend is still up. It's been a little bit squirrely here, even though the market's been pretty good. But yesterday was it was pretty positive. The long term trend is pretty pretty stable. Uh, I get concerned when this when this data comes below the the blue line there, it's below the 55 day moving average of the advanced declines. So if more money, more money's coming out of the market, that's when I'm concerned, but we're, we're not there. The, the trend is steady. It's bouncing above. It's not exciting, but it's not bad. There's really nothing to be, be worried about. So, so being invested right now makes sense. Our midterm, which is a little more cycle, which helps us on a couple of our models be a little more aggressive is just under this 200. I don't know where it is today. It's probably back a little bit here, but but positive, not super positive like back here. But when you get these big bursts, it's like, okay, yeah, we really want to be aggressive for a short term, maybe even have some leverage on. And then the reverse down here, when when this is below this this 200 line, even though not much happened in, in back in April uh, during this pull off, it wasn't that bad, but the money flow looked like it was really bad. So you really have to be defensive when, when it goes below here. And then in the middle, it's kind of like a hey, ho-hum, you know, a little strong, a little weak. Now we're back to being a little bit strong. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing to, to fight there. So we're in a good place. What we're interested in is if money flow gets really excited right here, that might be worth worth diving in a little bit more aggressive with leverage. But for the moment, I'm perfectly happy where we are. Since last month, the this whole set is exactly the same, which I think is the first time this year, or certainly since I've been showing this data, what's strong and what's not. So the NASDAQ is over the S&P. And these are all based on the one week versus one month. So it's, it's a five day 21 crossover probably more complex than need to know. We just want to know that what's who's stronger. Where do I need to be leaning, right? So NASDAQ is stronger than S&P. So of course, we're going to be leaning on the tech. Growth over value, same thing. We're going to leave on, on the tech. It's, it's all tech over there. Uh, the leverage versus non-leverage are both positive on the NASDAQ and S&P. That's just a healthy sign, you know, healthy confirmation that things are going pretty well. And then small over large. Large is definitely better. Although today, I know small is having a huge comeback after just looking terrible. So Again, it's just a retracement of, of a lot of doing the opposite of what's been happening over the past geez, months at this point. I mean, small caps has been flat year to date for forever. So maybe this will get it moving. Uh, hard to say. And then, of course, NASDAQ is over small. So everything good there. We're, we're allocated pretty much in line with how this says. I'm happy to see it stay stable because then we're actually getting the market running instead of chopping back and forth, not really sure what it's doing. This gives us a little more confidence in how we're positioned. These sectors, of course, XLC, XLK. Technology, technology, they've got the trends confirmed as consumer discretionary. I wish we'd bought a little more in there, but I just never liked the setup. So it is what it is, but we do own own these two. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, financials, also an interesting positivity right here. Uh, we did own energy briefly and that, that of course failed. So we went over to communications, which is basically large cap tech again. So that's where the strength is. It's, it's very, very concentrated there. Uh, basic materials is like energy and XLI is industrials. That's the one odd thing out that I'm a little bit concerned about. If the industrials can't turn around, that's generally a big turning point for the market if there's a divergence, right? If 
if industrials are doing bad while well, everything else is good, it, industrials are going to be right over time. So you kind of have to keep an eye on that. But at the moment, I'm not too concerned about it. But I, it's something we watch. That, that's probably the biggest factor right now that I'm a little bit like, okay, if that can't come back, then, then we may see a, a bigger setup. But that may play out into our September, October thesis. So that's the time that these finally get weak and really have a hard pullback. And we could have a big pullback from where we are now. It's, it would not be surprising. But I don't think we're there yet. Inching closer, but not there. Sectors, again, I think this agrees that that there's really just, it's a mess. This isn't markets all kind of coming together. When it, when it moves smoothly, these are all looking somewhat in the same direction. This is just all over the place. Of course, here's our technology and communications doing fine. Consumer discretionary there. Energy's iffy. Financials are in the green, but failing. So, I mean, that's that's that was interesting too. It's not, they're not really strong. And the rest are just in this jumbled mess really in the middle. And in the middle there, it just means they're acting like T-bills, which is not good, not bad. It's just indifferent. So I want to see movement off of this place. And Will noted earlier when we were flipping through these slides that when you get stretches of of momentum or or relative strength that get pushed way off, you may see a big reversion. So we may see a reversion from just consumer discretionary and uh, technology. They may pull back the hardest because they've moved the furthest relative strength to everything else. So that's something I'm definitely going to think about in the future. But at the moment, they're they're fine. I've no concerns. And then finally, I'm going to wrap up something that I've beat, been beaten to death, I think, on, the, on our written newsletter is how bad the bond market's doing. I don't think people really understand. And it always... I guess maybe frustrates me a little bit to hear how often you, you hear other advisors saying, oh, you've got to have your 40% in, in the bond market because that's a good diversifier. This BND, the green, is the aggregate bond index. It is negative. It's average negative around two and a half, two point eight 2.8 over the past three years. You're not, you're doing yourself any favors by being invested in there. Uh, the red is the 10-year treasury bond. So treasuries aren't any good either. Those are supposed to be safe assets. These are supposed to be protecting you and diversifying you. But they're not helping at all. And, and I think people, especially people in target date funds, are, are just in a bad place because of this stuff. That and, and having too much exposure to small cap because you have to be diversified. It doesn't make sense to me. If those things are not working, you don't own them. So my concern for people who are told they have to be in these things, I think it's a, a disservice. But And and we get interest rates um, start to fall. These could take off and they could be, that's where we go. That's where the growth is going to be. But for now, it's just not there. I need to see interest rates start to fall and then I'll care. But what I always give the example of, there are places that you can be. Uh, the CN is, is floating rates, right? Floating rates do fine. They, they're volatile too, but they're more steady. They're, they're at least trending up, as is the short duration, I think is the yellow. Short durations, you know, you're, you're not taking a whole lot of risk. So it's it's doing what it's supposed to do by, by offsetting your portfolio a little bit. And then purple is, of course, money market. There's no risk there at all. So those are the better places to be. And I, I feel like I write about this every month. For, for months now is this is where you want to be. You don't want to own these. And I, I just think that's, I, I want to show it visually and why I'm, I'm so emphatic about not liking bonds here. I, maybe I will eventually, but I want to hear the Fed change their minds. And that's what I got for this month. Thank you so much.